Asia Tyrannus zhuai is a new species of tyrannosaur coming from southern China during the latest Cretaceous. And there's a few other tyrannosaurs we know from the late Cretaceous of China, including some very closely related to tyrannosaurus, such as Zuching Tyrannus and Tarbosaurus. This animal, though, is also closely related, but unlike those ones, it was much smaller. In fact, it's the smallest known of the tyrannosaurs that make up the group closest to Tyrannosaurus rex. One of the main reasons it's being associated with things more like Tyrannosaurus rex than other smaller body tyrannosaurs that we know, especially from southern China during this time, is because of its deep snout. Essentially, if you put it on an XY grid, the Y axis would be very deep and tall, as opposed to what we see in things that were living even in the same places, like Kinjusaurus, which would have actually had a fairly long, narrow skull, at least as far as its depth, vertically. Kinjusaurus, also from the Nanjiang Formation, would have been actually a bit larger than this animal, though, meaning that Asia Tyrannus would have kind of been occupying this smaller predator niche. And when you're looking at things like Kinjusaurus, it's very possible that it was actually predating occasionally on Asia Tyrannus. Although there needs to be a little bit more work done on the exact levels of the formation these were in to see if they were living there at the same time. If they did live at the same time, though, that means what was happening in the Nanjiang Formation is kind of the opposite of what we see in North American ecosystems, especially if Nanotyrannus is valid. And I say that because this paper did use Nanotyrannus as its own taxa, and what it found is actually Nanotyrannus could fall anywhere between the more Tyrannosaurus-like Tyrannosaurs and the Alliorammines, which are animals much more like Kinjusaurus. In fact, it is one of those animals. Nanotyrannus, though, would have been the only one of the Alliorammines to actually make it into North America, though, so there is some question there. And additionally, I do want to emphasize it's not known for sure that Nanotyrannus was an Alliorammine, or even if it's valid. When you look at this phylogeny, even, there's all three of these branches coming off of the same point, which is called a polytomy. And if you want more on that kind of stuff, you can check out my taxonomy video. But it basically just means any combination of these organisms splitting off and evolving closer to one another than the others is valid. We don't have enough data to really say for sure exactly which of these three groups is closer related to one another than the others. This still then begs the question though, why is southern China so different than what we see elsewhere? For example, it seems like potentially Alliorammus and Tarbosaurus could have lived together, but even Tarbosaurus would have been much larger than Alliorammus, so it's really hard to say for sure what was happening in these ecosystems although there are some hypotheses and some work that's being done that'll hopefully solve to answer these in the future. One potential answer is that the Tyrannosaurus lineage actually did evolve in Asia and then migrated across the Bering Land Bridge into parts of North America and then became really large there and then migrated back in the case of Yuching Tyrannus and Antarosaurus. Meanwhile, Asia Tyrannus just may have been one of these smaller leftovers left in Asia that its lineage just never migrated across into North America meaning they essentially just kept their relatively smaller body sizes, especially when compared to things like Kinjusaurus. Another potential reason could just be climate, because as far as we know, this very southern portion of China was pretty warm. It would have been potentially around 30 degrees Celsius on average throughout the year, which would be about 86 degrees Fahrenheit. And again, you gotta think that's through the winter, but also just at nighttime, it wouldn't really cool off that much. So it would have been a pretty toasty area for these animals to live and maybe that had some sort of strange influence that we don't fully understand yet on this kind of evolution of smaller body sizes in Asia Tyrannus versus larger body sizes in Kinjasaurus. That idea is actually really interesting too, because when you're looking at these organisms and what they're related to, you find Asia Tyrannus, Nanoxaurus, and then Displetosaurus and Tyrannosaurus as a group all do form another polytomy, but this time just further up the tree. And what this means is essentially it might actually be closely related to things like Displetosaurus, but it might also just be closely related to things like Nanuxaurus, which comes from northern Alaska and would have been living in a much colder environment. So potentially there is some climatic influence that was causing these large sizes, but we just need more data on that. And I believe there are some people working on that, so hopefully we'll hear more about that soon. So all in all, this is just a really interesting animal because it's not at all what you expect. It's a more Tyrannosaurine Tyrannosaur, but not necessarily the top predator in its environment. And that's just not what we expect when we're looking at Tyrannosaurians. We're thinking big carnivores, the largest carnivores in their environment. And that's just not the case here, seemingly. Which, again, we'll need some more testing to make sure it was actually living at the same time as Kinjusaurus, but still, that's just so strange to think about. Because even if it wasn't, it wasn't achieving the same massive sizes. 
as based on the histology work that was done, it seems like this was probably a subadult specimen, so it could have grown a little bit larger, but certainly not that much larger.